Hello there, and welcome to another FAQ Monday. If you have a question, feel free to leave them down below in the comments, or head on over to my Ask FM thing, and you can do it anonymously, and maybe one day you will end up on a future episode of FAQ Monday. You never know. Mom. She keeps trying to get on here, and I'm like, no. I am not going to answer your question about, you know, my old baby photos. Sorry. First question, what's your thoughts on the DOD Bone Shaker? Will you demo it on your channel? Yes, I will be demoing the Bone Shaker. Digitech, DOD, Tom, my buddy Tom was nice enough to send me one. And that is kind of when my life decided to go, let's take a left turn. And I just haven't gotten to it yet. It's definitely on the list for me to do. And it sounds amazing. It's not, it's not a metal distortion pedal. It's really for detuning kind of a crunchy doom kind of a thing. Uh, it's really, really cool. Lots of options. They did a really wonderful job making the pedal, and that will definitely be coming right here soon. G'day, Fluff. How be thy? Just wondering if you could give us a few tips to starting a successful YouTube channel. Where should I start? You should start just by doing it. You were never going to be super pro or super good right off the bat. No one is at anything. And I think that what's lost on a lot of folks that want to get into the YouTube game is... It simply takes practice and a lot of time and a lot of effort. If you're passionate about something, people will come and check you out. Now, long term, to get your head above the rest of the pack, which is a very, very, very flooded place these days, you really have to offer something special. Getting a, a DS, DSLRs and a couple of lights and a shotgun mic is not going to make you have a successful YouTube channel. You really just have to have something unique to offer, whether it's honesty, um, dashing good looks, good coffee, or, you know, shredding guitar, playing skills that I don't have, you know, something like that. So really find your strengths and take a look at yourself and then just start posting and just start creating content. Regular content is king. I can't stress that enough. Don't post randomly on a Sunday night and then a Tuesday night three months later and expect like, oh, why, why don't I have loads of subs? It's not gonna happen. It takes a lot of work and it's really a job. Hey Fluff, just wondering what your noise gate preference is. Decimator slash NS2 slash smart gate. I actually get this question all of the time and I recently built a pedal board, pictured here, for the rest repose stuff. And I actually chose to go with uh, MXR, MXR smart gate for a few reasons. First, um, it simply has more options. And when you're standing in front of a roaring dual rectifier half stack, um, you need that gate to clamp down really, really, really fast and be dead on no matter what. Because um, sometimes the, the drums, the proximity of the drums or the bass can trigger the gate. Um, there's a teeny tiny little bit of low end loss, which I was okay with. I, I mean, I, I, it was, it's very negligible. Um, but there was, but moreover, there were simply just more options with the MXR versus the ISP. Now you guys know I've been a long time fan of the ISP stuff and the decimator was very, very good 98% of the time. Um, if there was a, a switch where you could go select a fast or slow gate, that would be really cool, but there's just nothing like that. And I know the G, G string is out there and all that stuff, and I don't want something, you know, extra cables going into the loop and the front end and all that stuff. I don't, I don't want any of that. I just wanted something clean and on my board and the MXR just uh, fit that uh, perfectly. And I have a Dunlop endorsement, so you know I should probably use you know, the MXR stuff because um, it's good and I want to represent. Um, as far as the NS2, my co-guitarist, Tony, um, he uses the NS2 and he likes it all right, even though it started to act weird the other day. But um, yeah, he's a, he's a boss NS2 guy. So you know, really it just matters on what works for you and your best in your situation. Um, I would definitely prefer the ISP or the MXR for sure though. How's helping you with the video shooting thing? I see the camera moving, so I assume someone is holding it. Or maybe you live in a haunted house, who knows? Yeah, lately I've been trying to switch it up a little bit, get some moving angles instead of just static tripod shots. And for that, I find it best to have Jared Dines come to your house and hold a camera and, you know, film you doing stuff while you're playing to a really terrible guitar track. That's, uh, that's really the best solution though, but uh, Jared Dines has been wonderful. He's a brother from another mother and 
Um, he's helping me a lot. We're helping each other out a lot with our videos because, you know, like I've said before, he lives like a half mile away. I could almost throw a rock and hit his house. And so he's constantly over here having dinner and drinking my beer, or, you know, things like that. So I'm like, hey, why don't you grab a camera too, man? But uh, yeah, it works out. You know, static shots are awesome and cool angles are awesome, but nothing beats, you know, a moving camera. And eventually I want to get a slider to kind of maybe do that automatically. So I maybe don't have to call him over here so often, but uh, yeah, we'll see. I'm always trying to mix it up. This week, I suggest you check out this BB King video. Now, a few few weeks ago, I posted and shared a video with you guys of Steve Ray Vaughan doing a really awesome guitar change. Well, this is BB King changing a string in the middle of a massive festival show. It's incredible. Just so much class. I just thought you guys would get a kick out of checking this out. You have been wonderful. I have been fluffed. I thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Coffee.